Yo, what's going on, y'all? Pastor Justin here, P4CM, back with you one more time. I want to say what's up to all of my subscribers and friends, Facebook friends, MySpace friends, the South family, what's going on with y'all? I want to address today the whole Kanye West freestyle thing. If you don't know what's going on, Kanye West busted the freestyle out. We're in the freestyle. He said that he sold his soul to the devil. Yo, but don't take my word for it, man. Hey, watch the clip yourself. I sold my soul to the devil. I know it's a crappy deal. Lisa came with a few toys like a Happy Meal. Eerie. Man, that had to make the hairs on the back of your arm stand up. Just to know that this artist... If he, whether he is or not, that for him to make that statement, that the potential of what you're saying is that the Satan could have been influencing everything he was doing. All the people that bought his CD, they got it in your iPhone, your iPod, and your shuffles, and your iPod touches, and, and nanos, and everything else like that. Man, y'all ought to feel right now psychologically disturbed. Because I would have to be wondering, if he sold his soul to the devil... Or if he believes that he sold his soul to the devil, then who has been influencing his music all this time? Who has been influencing what he's been rhyming about all this time? Let's just say for a second that Kanye West really did sell his soul to the devil. Imagine what the implications of that reality really could be. If you've been following him, that means you haven't been following Kanye West. You've been following somebody that wanted to use Kanye West's influence to corrupt and destroy people or the devil. So you're thinking, well, how does the devil corrupt and destroy people? He gets people to live lifestyles. To have world views that will, in the end, cause him to stand before God unforgiven. Cause him to stand before God as guilty of committing sins against God. It should make you think, like, man, how much of his music, therefore, was intended to lead men astray from God. To lead men into hell. That's Satan's goal. That people go to hell. That people are destroyed. People deny God. And we say, oh, come on now. Kanye West couldn't be trying to do something like that because he did a song called Jesus Walks. Yes, he did a song called Jesus Walks, distorting the true biblical Jesus. Kanye West was saying that Jesus walks with prostitutes and strippers, and he walks with drug dealers and gangbangers. Jesus walks, in essence, Jesus has fellowship with people that live lifestyles that are against him, that live lifestyles that practice sin. Is that true? Is that, is that really how Jesus is? You know, this is what the Bible says. The Bible says in 1 John 1, 6, If we claim to have fellowship with him, God, yet walk, meaning live, in darkness or sin, we lie and do not live by the truth. So I hear God's word saying that if you claim to have fellowship with God, if you claim to be walking with God or with Jesus, but you are still walking in sin, walking in darkness, it says you are a liar you don't live by the truth. Kanye West is offering you a Jesus that walks with you while you practice and live in willful rebellion and sin against God. But the true Jesus Christ told people to repent and turn away from their sins and believe that he died to save them from the penalty and power of their sins. You'll check out what the Bible says in Galatians chapter 5 verse 19. It says the acts of the sinful nature are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, faction, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. If Kanye West's music is exalting the majority of the sins on this list, if he's influencing people to agree and be comfortable with the majority of sins on this list, and but the Bible says those that live like this, who practice these things, want to inherit God's kingdom, and Kanye West says that he sold his soul to the devil, that makes you wonder, man, is that the influence of Satan trying to influence people to continue in sin, continue in lawlessness, continue in rebellion against God? Kanye West is not to be killing chickens and slicing people's throats off to be of the devil. All he's got to do is promote a sinful lifestyle to the world. And if the world buys into it and lives like that, the Bible says they want to inherit the kingdom of God. But what really gets me is now Christians that have been supporting Kanye West all this time are now saying, I ain't gonna listen to Kanye West anymore. To me, that's just really scary. You're probably like, dude, should you be happy about that? No! Because as a Christian, you should have been understood that Kanye West's message, his lyrics, are against Christ, are against what Christ stood for. Which one of Kanye West's songs is gonna encourage you to repent, turn away from your sins, and live a life worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ? 
Like how much of his music will encourage you to be proud, to do what you want to do, to live the life you want to live, to be rebellious, to be sexually immoral? It's about everything he does and stands for. What really gets me is I've heard Christians say that now they're going to stop listening to Kanye West because Kanye West made a statement that he sold his soul to the devil. Instead of not listening to Kanye West, because of what God said in his word. Why do we as professed Christians have to be shocked into obeying God? Shocked into submitting to God? Now we're like, okay God, I won't listen to Kanye West because Kanye West said he sold a soul to the devil. When we should be saying, God, I won't listen to Kanye West because you said as a Christian, I shouldn't have fellowship with darkness. I shouldn't have fellowship with people that glorify sin. I shouldn't have fellowship with people that stand in the way of what Christ came to accomplish, which was repentance of our sin, salvation, and hope. Holiness. Kanye West is a direct proponent against the kind of righteousness that God calls the Christian to live in the Bible. You know what? You can't keep God's commands and keep Kanye West on your iPod at the same time. Because Kanye West is telling you that it's okay to sin. He's agreeing with sin. It's okay to cuss. It's okay to be sexually immoral. And God's word is saying, no, humble yourself. Don't be proud. You can't be sexually immoral. Be a Christian anymore. Turn from your old life. Be transformed by renewing of your mind according to the word of God. These two things are at war. Kanye West music is at war with the word of God. Kanye West's purpose is against the purpose of Christ. But we can't see that because we're not reading our Bibles. We're not studying the scriptures. If it takes Kanye West making a statement that says, he sold his soul to the devil, and that makes us stop listening to him, that means we're going to keep listening to Beyonce, to Drake, to Lil Wayne, to Lil Bow Wow, to Chris Brown, to Neo, to Dr. Dre, to 50 Cent, to Lloyd Banks, Gucci Man, to Mario, to Carrie Hilson, to Lady Gaga, and all these other people, because they have yet to make a statement that's directly derogatory against God, anti-Christ, or is blatantly saying they sold their soul to the devil. And that means we keep listening to them, we keep glorifying their music, and by doing that, we're dishonoring and disobeying the word of God. And then we sit back and wait for them to come up with their Kanye West, I sold my soul to a double statement. And then we say, well, I'm not going to listen to them anymore. But we keep listening to every other artist that God's called us not to listen to because of their content is sinful. That means, in essence, God's word isn't good enough. It takes Kanye to say that he's serving the devil for us to say, I'm not going to support him anymore. But it only should have took the word of God saying that we as Christians should not be fellowshipping with darkness, should not be glorifying and partaking in things that are sinful. So now we'll stand up and be like, oh, you know, I'm against Kanye West, but you should have been against Kanye West. You should have been against anybody whose music and message and intent or lifestyle is anti-Jesus Christ or is sinful or glorifies things. The Bible says if you live like that, you want to inherit his kingdom. We should be against anybody like that. God has told Christians that he wants us to be sanctified. He wants us to be set apart. He wants us to live holy lives. He doesn't want us to have any fellowship with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. He's called us to turn away from sin, to walk in righteousness and holiness. The Bible says it's God's will for us to be sanctified. That means to be set apart from sin. And the Bible says in 2 Timothy 2.19, whoever names the name of Christ must depart from iniquity. Understand what it means to be in Christ and be a Christian that live for God. That we're called to be separate. And that's a beautiful thing. But it shouldn't take things like this to wake up the Christian community. It shouldn't take Kanye West saying he sold his soul to the devil. And then Christians are like, oh, wow, I'm going to stop listening to Kanye West. But then you're going to keep listening to Beyonce and every other secular artist that has not made a statement like that. Again. When God's word has called us already to repent and depart from these things. If all Christians actually obeyed the word of God and only listened to music that was honoring God and glorifying God and in line with the biblical message of the gospel of Jesus Christ or just in line with the truth of scripture, you know how many record labels would go under? How many artists wouldn't sell any music? The people that profess to be Christians were the ones keeping artists whose music and message is going against the lifestyle of the Christian. We're keeping them employed. Choose a size. All I'm saying. Pastor Jesse Cox signing out. I love you. I know I got hot. I'm passionate. I love God. I love Christ. Please don't take it personal unless you think, I don't even going to apologize for it, man. Look, if you take it personal, man, get in your word and read the gospel, man. There are people living today that will live for Christ. And that's just it. That's just it. Let's rise up, please. If you're in a situation right now, you know that God's speaking to you and you need to get your life together and get your life right. And you've been living lukewarm and you're feeling what I'm saying. Go check out p4cm.com. We got a lot of stuff on that website that can encourage you and really inspire you. We got your back in the struggle, man. I know I'm calling you out, but I, mean, I called myself out before I called you out. I'm doing this out of love.
So don't y'all hit me up like, you don't sound like you're doing it in love. And I want to thank the people that let me know about this. They hit me up on Facebook. You can find me on Facebook under Pastor Justin Cox. Man, hit me up, man. Send me a message. Good hearing from you. Talk to you later. Peace.